Serious people who have witnessed a murder, what happened? My father, who is an intercity high school auto shop teacher, was talking to a student through a chain link fence when suddenly the student was gunned down with an automatic weapon. He was within 5 feet of the victim when a few gang members approached and shot him in the legs, later firing the rest of the clip into his chest and head. They fled the scene immediately and didn't attempt to harm my father, however due to the proximity he was covered in blood splatter and body tissue. He describes it as the most horrific experience of his entire life. Edits. We live slash lived in Los Angeles. This happened before I was born, so he told me over 15 years after the incident. It happened in 1992. Although shocked for a few weeks he is fine now. I think this event inspired him to work harder to help kids in these communities. He had worked in several schools in similar areas. Thank you for the education on Clip V magazine. I genuinely didn't know there was a functional difference in word choice. Also, this was not associated with the La Riots. Happened a few years ago just outside a house. A man was walking on the street when a guy on motorcycle came in and just shot him multiple times with a rifle and drove off. He was still barely alive begging for help but eventually died. Chinatown shooting in Toronto last February. Was just got home from the bar and looked out the window after the shooting started to confirm it was gunshots. To see the final shots and everyone run. Went downstairs and out to the street to help with first aid but both guys I examined were dead. Turned out to have been a drunk guy overreacting to a personal debt one of the victims had to him or something like that. Less than a week ago there was a double homicide about 200 feet from my front door. Last Sunday, my friend and I were hanging out on my porch and actually in the midst of a rather heavy conversation. It was a warm evening, so we were drinking beer and enjoying the break in the weather, this being the PNW. After all, we heard a series of cracks and to be honest I wrote it off at first. First two and then followed by about half a dozen in quick succession. I did some time in Iraq as a medic and knew a bit what gunfire sounds like and in a few quick seconds it struck me as familiar. We saw two people run from the parking lot. Something clicked in me and I walked over to check. As I turned the corner into the parking lot I saw a man laying on his back. I called out to him and saw him gasping. Agonal gasps at the body does prior to death. The smoke was still clearing and the smell of gunpowder was still in the air. I'm a concealed carry permit holder and I drew my weapon and approached the man. It was the first time I had ever done so and I hated feeling like it was a prudent decision. I checked the first man I saw for a pulse and there was none. Meanwhile several people that saw what occurred approached me telling me what happened. My friend meanwhile was on the phone with the police and she was following close behind. One woman pointed the direction the guy went and said someone was on him. I took a closer look at the scene and only then noticed the other victim laying between two parked cars. He bore wounds which left no doubt that he was dead. I holstered my weapon and waited for the police. I did my best not to let my friend see the second victim. It was rather gruesome. She is a very delicate type and I feel bad that she was exposed to this. I was an army medic for 8 years during the Iraq war and have seen some gore. I grew up and currently live in a rougher part of a relatively sleepy town. The police showed up quickly and also quickly apprehended the suspect. It looks like it was a bar fight that spilled outside. I'm still dealing. The 4th is coming up and fireworks are going off and I have issues with being hyper or anyway. Thanks for reading. I wavered on sharing, but it was good to get it off my chest. Saw a murder from my kitchen window. I live in Lithuania and there are loads of those 9 floor boxes of flats that were built in the Soviet times. I live on the 3rd floor. In Lithuania there is a big problem with young people, teens turning bad and stuff. Glad I didn't get involved with these people. So I saw 17 to 18 year old guy walk out of the flat and meet a 16 year old guy that I knew. Basically they got into an argument and it spiraled into a fight. Seeing that he was losing the younger guy pulled out a knife, stabbed the older one in the arm, in the side and the last one in the neck. Then he ran away. The older guy died 2 to 3 hours later in the hospital. The murderer gave himself up the next day. Was making breakfast one beautiful Saturday morning. I hear two or three pops outside. I go over to the window to the balcony and see a guy unload the clip on another guy. 
that was still strapped in his car in the entry to the parking lot. The guy was clearly already dead from the first couple shots to the head. The car, still in drive, rolls across the parking lot and hits a curb which brings it to a stop. Shooter just stands around waiting for the cops to pull up. When they do, he quite calmly puts his gun down on the ground beside him and puts his hands up in the air. I'm not sure if this is right because maybe it wasn't exactly a murder. Well someone was killed anyway. When I was 14 to 15 years old I went shopping with my friend. I live in the safest city, nothing really ever happens here. We are just looking clothes to buy, and I look up to the marketplace, notice something is going on. This old woman is walking towards a middle aged man with a gun. I'm thinking no way this is happening, he must be a cop or something. Who the hell would just pull out a gun here? I couldn't hear what the woman said, but later I was told she said. Put the gun away, there are children here. He shot her. I watched her drop to the ground, but it didn't feel real, it was like watching a movie. He shot two more people after that, but I didn't see it, because everything went crazy. People started running, I pulled my friend away from the windows and some woman started screaming, lock the doors. I probably always remember this man yelling back, we have to let people in, they need to get to the safety. She was only thinking about herself, he was thinking about other people. It was an interesting comparison. I was about 10 years old. I was in the back seat of my mom's car waiting for my brother to get out of high school when out of nowhere I hear three loud bangs that sounded like fire cookers. Then comes a guy running down the street across from us, covered in blood and holding his stomach. He lies down on the grass and stops moving. This was back in 2006 and I had to take some classes that helped kids with overcoming traumatic experiences. Didn't work, I still think about it to this day. I was in Greece when they hosted the Olympics years ago. One night, my cousins took me and my brother to the bars slash clubs in Tripoli, where we got relatively smashed. We stepped outside and saw a commotion in the street. Looked like a small scuffle between several guys. One guy runs away, and another kid, maybe 18-ish, kinda crumples to the ground. A lot of blood starts pooling around the kid. I remember this very vividly, since the kid was dressed very nicely, think Jersey Shore, and was wearing a white shirt. A few of his friends kinda stand there in shock, and I think one of them kinda held him. I remember no one chasing the guy who ran, and no one freaked out as much as I expected. I also remember wanting to go over and help the guy. I had just taken a first aid slash CPR class and thought I could help, cause no one was actively helping or putting pressure on the wound. My brother and cousin kinda grabbed me and ushered me away, telling me I shouldn't get involved. They were very likely correct that it wasn't a good idea and that I probably couldn't help. We were staying at a hotel just around the corner, maybe one to two blocks away, and just went back to our room. The next morning we heard that the kid had died and that the murderer has been caught. It turns out that the victim was an Albanian kid who was out with his friends, got drunk, and talked some shit to some Greeks when watching the Olympics at a bar. One of those Greeks, presumably also drunk, escalated the situation until it spilled onto the street and turned into a stabbing. Never been less proud to be a Greek. Improbably late, but back in 1996 I was in Russia, watching a guy bash a girl's head with a rock, until her skull exploded. I was a kid, around 12 years old, hanging around the small thug group. The guy was a small time thug a bit older than me, everyone was though. Her skull exploded, and her brains and blood splattered across the asphalt. Others were standing in the circle, about 12 people, watching how it would end. I was watching with sort of morbid curiosity, cause I have never seen inside of a human before. Death was commonplace in Russia back then, so no one was really moved by it. She was killed, because she was the girlfriend of a guy, then cheated on him, and gave him hiv. In the end, he died like in a couple of months in some gunfight, I think. No one called the police as well then, for some weird reason. Years ago, I had friends over to play D&D and cops gunned down a burglar in my parking lot. He had a gun, and had climbed into a balcony, why? Then turned to fire on police. We checked it out, got interviewed by the news, and my friend went in a few dates with the reporter. Today I watched the Philando Castile dashcam video. 
that was more disturbing than seeing the body of a real criminal. To see a cop on video panic and just start shooting into a peaceful car? Jesus fucking Christ. Serious. I saw Linda Franklin get gunned down from a distance. I saw their jet away car, but it didn't click at the time, since everyone was looking for a white van. She was far enough away that I only saw her fall. She was maybe 100 yards away. Luckily I wasn't closer as I didn't want to see the aftermath. Almost everyone in the lot stampeded the Home Depot after that. I was a little too shocked to do anything but I stood there for what seemed like forever and eventually went back inside to get my friend at the neighboring bookstore. It took almost 4 hours to get anywhere close to home, but we wound up staying in a hotel for the night as the roads back into the city were closed off. We went through a ton of checkpoints and the police were super thorough checking all the vehicles. The friend I was with was a producer and I wound up giving a phone interview to his TV station. I also left a police message about the car that went speeding out of the parking lot immediately thereafter, but was never actually interviewed by the police. Everyone at the time was freaked out about being outside getting gas or shopping. And if you were too lazy to click the link, the shooters had more victims, but were eventually caught. One was executed, and the other is being resentenced as of May this year. Not sure if I'm too late, but my grandma was on the freeway and some dude was driving slow in the fast lane, so the car behind him kept honking at him. Eventually the dude who was driving slow stopped his car, got out with a gun and shot the guy honking at him. That's why my grandma to this day never honks her horn at someone. My brother and I witnessed a hit and run which resulted in the death of one of the victims. This was back in the early 90s, so kids playing outside unsupervised was a normal part of life. We were over at a friend's house playing on the front lawn during the summertime. It was after sunset and the street lights were starting to come on even though there was still enough light outside. I want to say we were playing with plastic swords, or things we imagined were swords. I think I had a plastic whittle bowl bat I was swinging around. Out in the street two men were riding their bikes in the middle of the road. In the distance, a full-sized van pulled onto the street and continued toward the bicyclists. As someone who has a father that is an avid bicyclist, I expect at least one of two things to happen. Either the van would give way while passing the cyclists as it was on a one-way road, or the bicyclists would notice the van and move off to the side allowing them to pass. The bicyclists did not move, and the van did not slow down. At this point I looked away, only to turn my head back to the scene after hearing my brother and his friend screaming stop, stop, at the direction of the van. One of the bicyclists doing the same, while hitting the side of the van with his hand. The driver did not stop, nor did he speed up. He simply kept at the speed he had been going before as if nothing happened. All the while, a streak of red began to form under the van's wake. It was at that moment we were, quite fiercely, told to get inside the house. Our friend's mother calling 911, and our parents shortly thereafter. I remember hearing my brother cry. He never cried, not out in the open any in the company of strangers. Even at a young age he already had a machismo complex, but being older than me, he also understood death and what we had witnessed. I was too young to fully grasp what had happened, thinking the man on the bike would get better. We were later asked to be witnesses in court. I recall my parents bringing us to the local courthouse and sitting in front of a judge. The leather seat seemed so big. I was too preoccupied with climbing in and out of it, bouncing on the cushion, while my brother gave the best description of the incident as he could. My parents next to us, faces pale with horror and sadness that we had to witness something like this. In the end, the police report was made. All of the party involved, the van driver and the bicyclists, had been drunk, or had been drinking at the time of the incident. The living bicyclist was issued a fine for riding in the middle of the road, and not yielding to traffic. I read the report later on in life at the library for those wondering. Microfilm of the local police and accident reports. While the van driver was charged with vehicular manslaughter. The most telling part was, when my brother told me sometime in high school, that the driver of the van was about to get out of prison. By that point in my life the incident was far behind me. It felt weird thinking about it again. But what horrified me the most was my brother's reaction and attitude. It was of a man seeking revenge. Wanting something back that was once stolen. In that sense, our innocence, our childhood. 
I had never realized how much this affected my brother. Shortly thereafter he began his spiral into alcoholism. 15 years later he was arrested for a DUI in front of his apartment. In a sick twist of fate, while driving a van. I was crashing on his couch during summer break in college, watching this all happen through his apartment window. After the incident he kept saying how much he wanted to stop. By this point in our lives we felt it was another broken promise as several close family members had tried to confront and help him, including myself just for him to push us away. The moment I knew he was serious was when he told me this, I don't want to become the van driver. He's been clean and sober since, thankfully. Now has two kids as well. I pray they never witness something that horrible. When I was 12 I witnessed an accidental murder. This old lady was driving too fast in a residential area and slammed a dude on a motorcycle. That dude was my older brother's friend. I saw the crash from afar like 50 meters away, then rushed there with my friend. The dude was squirming like a goldfish out of water for a moment and then just stopped moving. The old lady was petrified behind her wheel. She didn't even come out of her car. My brother told me later that you died of internal bleeding. No idea what happens to the lady though. 